Hi, good afternoon to all the students. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, who is talking? Uh? Who is talking just now? It's me, Chong Yi. Uh, Chong Yi, yeah, okay. Hi. Yeah, good afternoon. So I hope you all uh, are fine. Uh? Okay. So basically, uh, today, uh, we are going to learn about the new chapters. So for those who have just, uh, you are still celebrating your Chinese New Year. So I hope you can, uh, and you have enjoyed your Chinese New Year. Okay. So now we have to come back to our class. Uh, now it's already uh, fifth day, right? Fifth day. Yeah. For those who are celebrating. Uh, okay. So uh, for today, we are going to continue with your new chapter. Uh, by the way, has everyone here? I can see Boon Kiong is uh, at the top of my list. Uh, and then uh, we have Chai Siu. How come we have this? Okay. Uh, we have Chai Siu, uh, Chi Ye, uh, we have Chun Wei, Chong Yi, uh, who was talking just now. And we also have Han Xiang, we have Heng Dong, uh, Xin Shen, Jing Wen, Gaxing, uh, Brenda, Lok Jing, Mei Lin, Ernest, Jiang Le, Wei Hong, Wen Liang, Xi Pian, Xie Wen, uh, Yan Chang, Yao Ting, Yi Si, uh, Yong Chuan, Yu Yang, Zhe Lim, and Zhang Hen. Uh, there are 26 of you have already present. Uh, we're still waiting for another uh, about six are still coming in. Uh, by the way, uh, Chong Yi, I remember uh, there is one student uh, asking me about the delay branch and also uh, the branch not uh, predict, uh, predict not branch, right? So let me first explain to you. And this is basically, uh, there's actually not much different uh, uh, predict not taken. Uh, there's not much different. Why I say so? Uh, there are some differences, uh, but it's not much. Uh, okay. Uh, first, first uh, scheme you can use to handle the pipelining uh, hazards is to use a store. Meaning that you store the total operations until everything is clear. Then we have the predict not taken. For predict not taken, uh, what we do is like this. Okay, so this is the operation, the instruction I plus one. And this is untaken branch instruction, right? Okay, if let's say the branch is untaken, so we continue to execute all the instructions following the untaken branch instruction. But let's say if the branch is taken, then after it uh, executes the instruction plus one, after it has determined that uh, the branch instruction has been taken, so you have to go to the branch socket. Uh, as such, the either will be here or the either here. Okay, either will be put here. Uh, so after that, uh, you will continue at the as the at the branch target address. So this is actually for the predict not taken. So uh, Chong Yi, the day you asked me, uh, what's the difference between predict not taken and also delay branch? Actually, uh, I have already searched many materials. Uh, there's not much different except that uh, this one is the one I found uh, the different. It's either over here. So if uh, it's either here, if delay branch, what will happen? Same thing will happen if let's say antigen branch instruction. So it will uh, go to branch delay. Delay branch delay instruction I plus one. Uh, so it will at the branch is delay instruction here. Uh -huh. I plus one. Then after that, uh, they go to I plus two. Okay, if not taken, and then it will go to I plus three, I plus four. Uh -huh. So uh, the, the, there's no difference in terms of the 
in terms of how, uh, how they handle that. Uh, but uh, the difference is for the delay branch, uh, compared to this uh, predict not taken, predict not taken, they will execute the next instruction after the branch instruction. Okay. But for the delay branch, what will happen if you execute uh, the delay branch delay instruction plus one? That means it will, con it will take the instruction after the branch target. Okay, branch target. Then after that, they will continue to do this. Then the result of this branch delay instruction plus one is stored inside, uh, stored inside first. Then when they come to here, only it will take it. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is a different. Uh, uh, both of them actually solve the same problem. Uh, just that uh, for the predict branch not taken, the next instruction will be they execute this. But for the uh, pre, uh, delay branch, uh, it will take the next instruction over here. Okay, so let me uh, use a whiteboard to explain about this a little bit more. Okay, uh, store you all know, right? Store means it stop everything. But for the predict not taken, Okay, let, let me, ah, you can see here. So let me use a pen. Ah. So you can see that for delay, for uh, delay branch, ah, you will execute here, this one, delay branch. Okay. Predict not taken is over here. Okay, predict taken. Eh? Predict taken means uh, you will execute this one. Okay, uh, the last one will be store, right? Store means it will not take anything, nothing. Okay, nothing in the pipeline. So this, these are the differences. Uh, Chong Yi, can you understand? Mm, so the delay branch would not be executed if, I mean, there's no, the criteria wasn't met, right? Uh, it will not be executed immediately. You will store the result later for later use. Okay. Means meaning uh, the computer wants to use, uh, don't want to waste anything. You feel that uh, no matter you branch or not, eventually you will reach here, right? Soon or later, you will have to execute this, right? You execute the delay branch first. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's no different for the for what he wants to achieve, uh, but uh, the way a little bit different, uh, only a very small difference. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, means you can understand, right? Yeah. So this one very hard to understand because the uh, computer technology is very advanced. So uh, every day they come up with a new technology. And the most difficult thing is, uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, 10 years ago, they used uh, L3 technology. Maybe after uh, maybe later, uh, a few years later, only we will understand the L3 technology, okay? So, because it's a top secret for the computer companies, so sometimes they will not release the technologies until it's become old already. Eh? So that means uh, sometimes the technologies are new eh, for everyone. <coughs> so this will be the uh, four, four different uh, ways to solve it. So very good. So let me uh, close this. So for today, we are going to uh, to the new chapter, which is called the cash. I believe uh, most of you already heard about cash before. Uh, cash is a very important component in a computer uh, is a very important component 
So basically, we want to see uh, the comparison of the cash sizes in this table number four. So what you can see here, you can see that uh, all the computers invented back from very uh, long time ago. Uh, this is what uh, this is the long time ago computers, IBM 1968. Uh, basically, it has a cache. The cache is 16 to 32 kilobyte. Okay, it's a uh, only level one. Then after that, uh, when the computer become more modern, uh, the size of the cache become a little bit bigger, 64 kilobyte. And after that, it has become 128 to 256 kilobyte. Eventually, uh, come to here, uh, it become 8 KB for the Intel 80486. Yeah, so because this is the personal computer, as you can see, for the mainframe, basically the mainframe is made for the company. Uh, what is the difference between a company and also a person like us? Uh, because a person like us, sometimes we are very poor, right? We just enough uh, to have the something to eat, right? Then we spend some money to buy a computer. So that's why the size of the cash has been dropped. When they when they come up with the personal computer, but for the company, basically they are afford to have a higher uh, number of cash. That is come uh, until it become here also it become eight kilobyte. Uh, but the most notable thing here is when Intel produce a Pentium. Pentium is five x six uh, x zero five x six, but they don't want to use this x zero five six. Because uh, the reason is uh, the patent company tell them, uh, the trademark company say, company say, you cannot trademark the numbers, right? Let's say I, I want to trademark my company name is one two three. Cannot you cannot trademark because one two three is used everywhere, right? Uh, I can use it for many purposes. If you trademark it, so I cannot use it, right? Uh, it cannot be accepted. So that's why then change the name to Pentium. Uh, then we have the Pentium, Pentium 1, Pentium 2, 3, and then Pentium 4. Then you can see the cache size has uh, going to two levels, L1 and L2. But the L1 cache is 8 kilobyte, and the L2 cache is 256 kilobyte to 512 kilobyte. Then after that, the Pentium 4 as a uh, eight kilobyte here, and also two five six kilobyte over here. After that, uh, they keep on increasing. Okay, so this is basically the cap size of the personal computers. But one very important thing that you can see here, after titanium, basically uh, is for the PC. Some some uh, very uh, some some personal users they might use this uh titanium, but usually it will be used for the server. Uh, and you can see it has become a three level cache, uh, sixteen kilobyte, uh, ninety six kilobyte, and four megabyte. Uh, you can see yes, go to the megabyte for the L three cache. Uh, as you can see, uh, the cache size has already become more. And then the level also become more. So that's the reason why you need, you need to study uh, cash. Cash is a very important thing because uh, it's very important for us to increase the speed of a computer. Without further ado, let me uh, go to the page of the cash memory. Uh, cash memory. What is a cash? So you have a CPU over here. Okay, usually uh, when you have a CPU, you buy a RAM. Okay, a RAM is basically your main memory. Then only you have a hard disk. Uh, when I talk about hard disk, I don't know whether you still know what is a hard disk. Uh. 
Because currently the computer is becoming more sophisticated until you don't have a SSD, you have SSD. Uh, this one is very, very fast compared to the hard disk. Uh, all your handphone basically, they use this SSD. Uh, okay, so previously, uh, they only have the CPU and the RAM. The problem about this connection is that because this bus, let's say we have a bus connecting CPU and RAM, this bus is actually very slow. So computer designer found that the RAM too slow already. Uh, if you don't know what is a RAM, uh, RAM is actually the read access, uh, read access memory. Eh? Okay, RAM. So they found that why the RAM becomes so slow. The reason uh, why the RAM becomes so slow is because CPU is inside an IC. Here is a CPU. And then they connect using a wire, go to the RAM. Okay. So uh, the computer designer has already come up with another idea. If the RAM is too far away, uh, it will take very, very long time to access to it, right? Uh, for a computer, a very small distance like 2CM is already long enough. Uh, okay. Why don't we put our cache inside here? Okay. A similar RAM here. Uh, so we put a cache here. So when a computer needs to access the memory, they will directly go to the cache. But the problem is cache is small. Okay. Cache, uh, cache can only take a small part of the RAM over here. So this is just a one part only. Lah. Okay. Just a one cache, uh, one part uh, over here, cache image here. So if you need to come to here, then only the CPU can access it. So in this case, the CPU can access the data much more faster. So this is the idea about the cache. Uh, the cache only exists uh, not long ago. Uh, yeah, not long ago, a few uh, like, like what you see at the slide here. The cache exists in IBM 3655, uh, 1968. Uh. Actually quite long, uh, for, for us it's quite long. Okay, let's come back. Okay, so what is the principle uh, behind this cache? It's about the memory trade-off. Okay, memory trade-off over here. So we have the memory trade-off over here. So we know that the large or the dense memories are slow. Uh, so very slow, uh, like a turtle over here, very slow. So fast memory are small. They are very fast, but small. This one is like your, uh, let's say if you still use a CD-ROM. But when I talk about this uh, CD-ROM, uh, this uh, it's become obsolete in these few years. Uh. <laughs> so I hope uh, you still know what is that. Uh, okay. Fast memory are small, expensive, and consume high powers. Uh, this one is like your resistor. Resistor is just the transistor inside the computer uh, inside a CPU. So our goal is basically to give the processor a feeling, uh, not, not a processor, like, just give us a feeling that it has a memory which is large and consume low power and cheap. You know, all people are quite, quite uh, they, they want everything good, right? Yeah, so quite greedy, right? So it means they want a fast and cheap. So what they do is they come up with one sophisticated method so the solution is an hierarchy of memories. So what they come up is between the CPU, we put in the cache, we put in the L2 cache, and we put in an L3 cache. In terms of the speed, the register inside the CPU is definitely the faster. Because why? The register is just, let's say I have an ALO here. The register is just stay beside the transistor that form the ALU, right? Yeah, very fast. Uh. Just uh, maybe a few, uh, how many nano uh, meter only uh, over there. So very fast. You can just uh, communicate within themselves. But the cache is still uh, inside here. Okay. Then the LQ cache usually will be outside. This one external. Okay. Then we have the L3 cache. Usually, uh, 
this technology advanced so frequently that it might change over time. So speed is faster at the CPU as a register and slower at the RAM. So the size is smaller at the CPU because it's very expensive. The cost to make a CPU is definitely higher because we don't have the space to put all the resistors inside, right? Uh, so it's definitely higher. And the power consumed is highest. Uh, this one is highest uh, per, per bit. Huh? Yeah, highest per bit, huh, the power. But, but definitely inside, you might argue with me, is that why, why is the power is higher? Maybe per bit, huh? okay? Because the hard disk can assess many things together, right? Yeah. So uh, for the memory hierarchy, the terminology is like this. For each memory level, uh, define the following. Okay. Uh, when you have a memory, so let's say if you hit, okay, let's say I want to access to my, let's say here, I want to uh, access to, to what, uh, uh, let's say I have here, I have an address of 20, okay, 20 over here. You want to access the address 20. Here, the CPU want to access to address 20, yeah? okay? Move uh, AL20, yeah? here, over here. So if they want to access this address, so they will try to find whether L1 here has a 20 here or not, okay? If the memory is exist here, so there will be a hit over here. So hit means the data appear in the memory level. So let's say 15% of the data, uh, I get it from the cache. I get the hit rate of 50%. Uh, so time that require for me to get the cache uh, data to me, maybe 20 milliseconds. So this will be the hit time, okay? So if let's say you miss the data in the cache, so this is a miss, you don't have it. So the miss data, then you have to retrieve the data from the next level, which is a memory, the RAM. So the miss rate is equal to one minus the hit rate. In this case, I will still get 50%. Huh? And then miss penalty, what penalty you can give to the computer when it miss? So you have to retrieve the data from the next level. Then after that, replace it to the cache. So this will be a missed penalty. From 20 milliseconds, maybe I will need 200 milliseconds in case there is a miss. Uh, so this is the two very important terminology when you use the cache. So a cache is basically a faster memory. So let's say if you hit, then you will access uh, faster, access the data faster. So the average memory access time, what's the memory uh, average memory access time is effective T. So this is a T, uh, big T. Yeah? T effective equals to the heat time. Heat time, 20 millisecond. Multiply the heat rate, 50% plus the miss time, 200 millisecond. Multiply the miss rate, which is 50%. So in this case, you can calculate how much time uh, you, you are required uh, for you to uh, have the average memory access time. So if the heat rate, our target is always to have the heat rate close to one. Means that everything is inside the cache. Uh, in this case, the effective time is close to heat time. So whenever you don't have the data here, so you have to come to memory and then uh, copy to here. In this case, it will be slower. So this is a principle about the cache. But any question you want to ask me before I continue? Any question? Okay, if no question, then I will give you a pool, yeah?
Okay, I've launched the pool. Uh, let's answer this question. Which memory is the fastest? There are four of them. Let's uh, guess. I will give you like two minutes to answer this. Very carefully, yeah. Which memory is the faster? Fastest. There are four of them. Register, cache, RAM, and hard disk. Register is inside the CPU, eh? it's very, very close to CPU. Okay, let me close the pool within 10 seconds. Yeah. So I will end the pool, yeah? Okay, so everyone has already answered. So the answer is, uh, is the answer is, if let's say I don't put the register, the answer is cash up. But since I put the register, so the answer should be registered. Because register is inside the CPU, it should be faster. So congratulations for those who answered correctly. Yeah? Okay, very good. So now let's continue. Okay, implementation. Okay, going down the hierarchy has the following results. Let's say if you go down the hierarchy, uh, it will be cheaper, larger, slower. Oh, the drawback is slower, right? It's not good. Huh? It's uh, not good. This one is very good. Very good. Okay, so the key is to decreasing the frequency of access of the memory by the processor. So this is basically the pyramid, or we call it the hierarchy. As you can see, the register basically uh, stay at the top of the, the pyramid. And then we have the L1 cache, L2 cache, and sometimes we have L3 cache, and then we have the main memory. This all inside the system. Then after that, we have the hard disk, CD-ROM, uh, RW, and also the backup. So uh, when we look at this, uh, you can see that uh, basically the access time for the register is definitely very fast, one to two nanoseconds. So very, very fast. And for the access time for the L1 cache is also very fast, right? 3 nanosecond to 10 nanosecond. Therefore, the L2 cache is a little bit higher. Then come to the hard disk, it's millisecond. Then come to the tap backup, it's 10 seconds. Uh, the distance, when you want to access, this is inside the system. So register until main memory is inside the system. So it's very easy to access them. Then we have the internal cabling to connect to the hard disk and uh, CD-ROM. There will be a cable. This cable will connect to the hard disk drive and also CD ROM. Then we also have the tap backup. Okay, so this is the source of the memory hierarchy. Tap backup. I think uh, now today, uh, uh, when I talk about this tap backup, uh, uh, nobody use a tape to do the backup, right? At this moment, uh, uh, not even a floppy disk. Uh, do you know what is floppy disk? Uh, floppy disk. Floppy, uh, so this is actually a piece of this. Okay, uh, it's look like this. Uh. I think you don't know this. Uh. It's a piece of this. Uh. It's called a PDs. Okay, I hope you, you know. Uh. Maybe this yes, is a uh, happy child. You, you know, right, Chungi? Yeah, we or know. Or anyone? Yeah, we know. Yeah, you know, uh, floppy this. Uh. I thought you all already forget this thing. Uh. I still have a few pieces, uh, but I don't know how to access it. Because I don't no longer have the floppy disk driver. Yeah. Then uh, we also have the CD ROM. Uh, CD ROM, uh, let me show you what is the CD ROM, yeah. Okay. 
I hope you still remember this uh, CD, uh, CD ROM, uh, DVD ROM, this DVD ROM. But now also it has become obsolete because most of the computer does not sell a CD, uh, DVD ROM drive. Okay, directly it will just provide you with a, with a USB. Actually, this is a very advanced technology. Okay, so uh, it's a very good technology, but already obsolete because we already have the, a lot of Google Drive, etc. So they already solved the problem of the uh, latency of this storage. Okay, so let, uh, let me uh, keep this, this first. Okay, now uh, we are talking about the effective memory access time. The cache stole a subset of the memory, which means uh, the cache over here, let's say you have a cache, is uh, small. And then the memory is actually very, very big. The cache can only store one portion of the memory. Okay, uh, they can only store one portion or uh, a little bit inside the memory, one by one. So hopefully the subset being used now, so how a subset of the memory, you hope that the subset is being used in the cache. Uh, okay, so effective memory access time. The effective time, it's basically the cache time multiplied the heat rate. When you hit the cache, then uh, the cache time is multiplied the heat rate plus the memory time multiplied the one minus heat rate. So whenever you cannot access from the memory, so you have to get it from the, uh, sorry, from the cache, you have to get it from the memory. So this CPU. CPU has two choices. One, you get the data from the cache. If not, then it has to get from here. So this one may be 200 milliseconds. This is a 20 uh, millisecond. So definitely the time will be higher. So the key map includes the time it takes to detect a cache miss. So miss after they come to memory and take the data, and also you have to copy this data back to the cache. Example, assume that T cache is 10 nanosecond and T memory is 100 nanosecond. So the heat rate, is zero means if zero means we only need 100 nanosecond in order to get all the data that means we have 10 data yeah? if let's say you have 50 percent heat rate then you will need 55 nanosecond so if you have the uh, one one only uh, not not 10 uh, sorry what if let's say one data so if heat rate is zero so effective uh, memory access time is 100 you always have to uh, access to the memory. So let's say it's higher, then you can see the time going down. Uh -huh. So T memory over the T cache goes up. Uh -huh. Then more important, that heat rate closer to one. Let's say if uh, this one become, memory become 1,000 nanosecond. So you have your, let's say it's two different, uh, so better you access all the data from the cache. So this is the idea be, uh, behind the cache. Uh, as the Chinese uh, idiom say, uh, if you have a very far relative, uh, it's better that you have a close neighbor, right? Uh, hopefully that is true. So this is what is meant by this. Uh. So what is a cache? A cache is a small amount of uh, fast, memory but why is small and fast okay because uh, it has a simpler decoding logic the ram is bigger so that means you need a big decoder okay and then it has a more expensive SRAM technology i hope you all know why it's a SRAM technology eh? and then close proximity approximate means the distance close distance to processor and cache sits between normal mean memory and CPU, or it may be located on CPU chip or a module. Currently, the L1 cache is inside the CPU. So the difference between SRAM and DRAM. SRAM is basically consists of six transistor, and the DRAM is basically consists of a usually one resistor, uh, one transistor. 
So this is the DRAM. Uh. For example, let's say a DRAM is like this. Uh. Okay, so uh, something like this. Uh. Okay, so it has another here. So this is actually a DRAM. But for the SRAM, basically it needs six transistors. I'm not going to show you here because the circuit is very complex. Uh. So DRAM is definitely cheaper because you only need one, one uh, transistor uh, and most usually, and then you also need one capacitor. Okay, you need one capacitor to, and then you need to have a refreshing circuit. Okay. So this is a cache. When you have a CPU, you also have a cache here. Then you have memory. So what is the principle behind the trans data transfer of the cache? So let's say you want to transfer CPU uh, from the cache to the CPU. Let's say a data here. So you do the word transfer. What is a word in computer? A word is basically depends on the architecture of your computer. Let's say if it is a 32-bit computer. So because one byte equal, equals to eight bits. Okay. So a 32 bits computer will be four, uh, sorry, four bytes computer. In this case, when it's a four bytes computer, the word equals to four bytes. It depends on your computer architecture. <clears throat> so the computer only transfer word from cache to CPU. Whereas for the mean memory, to cache, it transfer by block. The block is uh, the size different. It can be very big, like uh, maybe 1K bytes. Okay. Uh, something very strange about computer, let's say you have 1K bytes, it's actually 1024 bytes. Uh. It's not 1000 bytes. Uh. If let's say, if I ask you what is a uh, 1 kilobytes, it's actually 1024 bytes. Yeah. Uh, equivalent to 2 to the power of 10. Yeah. So uh, it's 1, 0, 2, 4 bytes, it's one block. Sometimes it might be different size. Uh. So the main idea about cache is the cache holds a small part of the entire memory. Uh, the memory is definitely a lot more. What the cache can be, uh, will be smaller. How small is it? A lot smaller. Cache definitely very, very small compared to the memory. So what can the cache do to help the CPU? It will copy the whole things here, coming to here. So this one, uh, we call it a block, lah, a block or a line. Lah. In, in our case, it's a line. Lah. We're doing for it block first. A line or a block, go to here. So this is actually a one line, line one, line two, line three in the cache, and line four in the cache. So each line of a cache can actually store one block from the memory. Okay. Also the same size with the line. Eh? Of course, uh, later we will uh, define the block and the line again. Uh, but generally, this is one line equals to one block. So one block in memory is stored in one line in cache. That's why. Uh, inside the cache, one line will have a few bytes. For example, for in this case, maybe it has four bytes. One, two, three, four. So the address here will be zero. Address here will be one. Address here will be two. Address here will be three. So in computer, the three is one, one. Two is one, zero. And one is zero, one. And zero is definitely zero. So Whenever you need to access the memory, so what computer do is to copy one block to one line in the cache. And then inside the cache, there is one extra thing here. We call it a tag. Okay, This tag is to label which block inside the memory are you referring to. For example, let's say I copy the zero to here, then definitely here, I have to put the zero over here. 
So typical block size is 32 to 64 bytes. The blocks are aligned. So the cache are partitioned to the cache line. So one block of the memory go to one line of cache. Remember the term uh, make uh, let's study the term correctly. Uh. One block inside the main memory or the RAM is copied to uh, this one. Okay, one sometimes is uh, definitely is a block or line. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, okay, each cache line hold a block. Uh, the open system each cache line hold a block. So only a subset of the block is mapped to the cache at a given time. So the cache views and address as, let's say if I cache here, the address is the block number and then the offset. Let's say if I want to access this memory, uh, so to give the name of the block two, then the offset is zero. Then only I will, will be able to access the data over here. This is called a cache architecture. So the cache operation is as such. First, the CPU requests the content of the memory location. Uh -huh. If let's say the cache got this data, so this one is key. Then you get the data from the cache very fast, 20 nanoseconds. If not present, uh, that will be a problem. If not present, then one of these two things happen. The first thing is you will copy the cache, uh, so copy a memory into a cache. This is the first thing. The second thing is you will copy the memory to the cache, but you also do the second thing. Simultaneously, it deliver to CPU from the memory. So for the first case, you will just cache, uh, get, get the data from memory. This is the second case, cache get the data from the memory and also then after that memory also gives the data to CPU directly. So uh, both of these cases can happen, depends on the computer architecture. So we are going to the deeper uh, of the principle of locality. For example, let's say you want to buy, buy Rocky now, uh, the, uh, buy some bread now. Uh, you might, you will not go to, let's say you stay in uh, Kajang. So you might not go to Mid Valley to buy, right? It's too far from you, especially in this pandemic time. Huh? So you will basically go to the 99 shop behind your house. They'll definitely buy there and then you come back, right? Uh, so this one is definitely uh, the principle of locality. You will always want to access something which is local to you. So cash misses are unavailable, unavailable. So every piece of data and code must be loaded at least once. So what does the processor do during a miss? Let's say if you have missed, you don't hit. So what you do, you must copy. Uh, let's say if let's say 99 shop supermarket does not have the bad press. So usually they will call the supplier. So supplier will send a whole lorry of the lottery, right? To 99 supermarket. Uh, then you will put all the roti inside the supermarket, right? Uh, 99 supermarket, then only then you, you can buy from there, right? This is the same concept, yeah? So if the heat, cash heat, then definitely uh, you will just get the data from the cash. Let's say if it does not heat, then you have to get the data from the memory to cash, then only you will get the uh, data from the cash or you directly get the data from the memory to the CPU. So this is the case uh, for the first case and the second case, cache feed and cache miss, okay? But the problem is if you want to copy this one, uh, two, if you want to copy the three to the two here, then two will have to be taken out, right? You cannot store everything. So that's why at the end, you still have to sacrifice something. Uh. For example, let's say your 99 supermarket, have to put all the roti cannot, right? You only can put until certain amount of roti prepared for you to buy, right? You cannot put all the shop, draw the shop, put roti and then put until the corridor, right? Cannot, right? Yeah, there's still other items to be bought, right? Yeah. So now, 
We're going into the cache design. Don't worry, uh, as promised, I will give you some rest uh, after I will discuss a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, cache design involves the size. What's the size of your cache? And also, you want to know the mapping function. Uh, this one is definitely very difficult to obtain. We have studied this uh, for a few years, I cannot understand this. Uh. Wow, mapping function, very, very difficult. Uh, later, you know. Uh. Replacement algorithm. And then we have the right policy, block size, and number of catches. Yeah. Uh, the catch size. What is the size of the catch that we want to put inside our computer? What's the size? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh. Well, which size is better? We don't know yet. Okay. Later, we will go to uh, Intel website and then we will try to look at the specification of some computers. As you know, uh, the, basically some computer manufacturers, because they are uh, very advanced technology, that's why they keep their trick secret. Uh. So that's why some of the cache that they tell you actually is not inside a textbook. But don't worry, after 10 years, that we have to really review it. Uh. So later we will know that, uh, yeah. Okay. So cash, more cash is actually more expensive uh, for the speed wise. More cash actually faster up to a point. And then large, uh, but you need a larger decoding circuit, uh, multiplexer, decoder, and then algorithm is needed to map the main memory to the cache. This might take more time than just a direct RAM. So cash is good until certain amount. So basically, this is a typical cache organization. Uh, you have a processor design, then you have a control uh, circuits, then after that, you put a cache here. After that, you, put, uh, you connect to the system bus, and then this system bus, you connect to your RAM. Okay, RAM over here. So uh, we have the mapping function. The mapping function is the method used to locate a memory address in a cache. As I said, uh, for this mapping function, I've learned this for several years. Uh, then after several years only, I can fully understand. Uh, you see how difficult it is. Uh. So it's used when copying a block. Okay, copying a block. Uh, so this one, uh, copying a block from the main memory to the cache. And it's used again when trying to redeem, uh, retrieve data from the cache. So there are three types of the mapping functions. The first time, uh, as we know, we have the direct, fully associative, and also set associative. Uh, let us learn the first time. Huh? Uh, we will first learn the fully associative cache. For the fully associative cache, we have a one tab over here for the cache. Uh, this is inside a cache. So this tab is basically to tell you which block inside inside the memory, right? So after that, we have a line. So for a fully associative cache, address is partition, uh, partitioned to offset within the block and also block number. So offset is over here. Let's say our, our one is uh, 50, how many? Uh, 32 bit computer, then we have four bytes. Huh? So we have one, two, three, four over here, four bytes. So four bytes to form one line, sir. Okay. Uh, let's say that for one line over here. So each cache line actually has a tab. Uh, as inside the cache, actually we have uh, many line, uh, line one until n. Then we have a tab. So all tags are compared to the block in parallel. So you need a comparator per line. So this is about the fully associative cache. So in this case, initially the cache is empty. So a line is uh, invalidated. But after that, uh, the computer will copy all the data from the memory and put inside the uh, fully associative cache. Uh, then they copy one by one and then put a tag over here. Okay, so this is called the fully uh, associative, fully associative cache. Okay, now we go to the direct mapping. As promised, we will have 15 minutes rest. This I know all of you have already studied for a very long time. So I will give you 15 minutes rest before we go on to the new topic of the direct mapping, which I think is very difficult. Hope you, you can absorb that. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. So I will give you 15 minutes. So what is the time now? 2.55, so 3.10. Uh, we will come back. So you can take a rest. Uh, wait, uh, let me see whether got answer. I use one time, one. Oh, you need only one time, uh, Jonathan. Uh, Jing Wen also got, you see in primary school, uh, Yao Ting. Uh. Yeah, now you can no longer find. Uh. Yeah, very hard to find, uh, even except you go and purposely buy, uh, but maybe very expensive, uh, because no longer manufactured. Uh. Yeah, so very good. So we, yeah, I come back uh, by 3.11. Uh. So see you later. I will close my mic first.
Hi, uh, good afternoon to class again. Uh, it's already 3, 11 p.m. And the time has passed so fast, right? Uh, 15 minutes has just, uh, has just gone. Uh. So time is precious. So we will continue to study uh, our cash, uh, next cash uh, topics. I hope you all have already enjoyed your lunch dinner, lunch dinner or your tea time or maybe you have already, already rested enough. So now we will continue. So as you can see here, previously we have already studied this. So we know that there are three types of the mapping inside a cache. Okay, the first one is actually the direct. Uh, the second one is actually fully associative. And third one is a set associative. As I said, I learned this for a few years. After that, I still don't understand. After that, only I understand. So for the fully as uh, fully associative, so what we have learned just now is that one block inside the mean memory is going to copy over here. Let's say the block number one. So the line will be copied over here. So you have a memory over here. Okay, memory. Let's say you have a zero, one, two, three, etc. So you have to copy one block to here to the cache. Okay, and then you have to put in the number of the one over here to the tab of a cache. So whole thing here is actually a cache. Okay, so this is for the fully associative cache. <clears throat> Sorry. So for the direct mapping, this is the second type. For the direct mapping address structure, the list in each, uh, the each main memory address can be divided into three fields. Okay, so if you have a memory address, can be divided into three fields. So the least significant uh, W bits over here. It's basically to identify what offset into the blocks. It might be uh, one, two, three, four for the 32 bit computers. So these are divided into two fields. The least significant is actually uh, remaining uh, here. Okay, remaining here can be divided into two. Here you have the tag. So this is actually the tag to tag the block number inside memory in the memory where this bit identifying the row in the cache the row in the cache okay so this is for the row in the cache so let's say if your cache is a uh, third row so you put three over here here is, is a block uh, number in memory so it's a little bit different for this direct mapping compared to the fully associative so for the direct mapping uh, you basically have a new term called a set. A set has a, num has a number. So a given block is mapped to a specific cache line. Okay, a given block is mapped to the specific cache line, also called a set. If two blocks are mapped onto the same line, let's say if you have two blocks, it's mapped to the same line, so only one can reside in the cache. This set is a direct mapping. Okay, so this is a type. And this is a block number. It's a set and the block number. Basically, uh, the set will come to here, set number. For example, let's say you have a five over here and 32 over here. So this memory address inside the memory can only be put where? It can only be put at this place, five. So uh, maybe you can only put zero, one, two, three, four, five. It can only be put at the number five, set number five over here. Meaning that the block number, you have to put, put over here. Inside here, you put, okay? Inside here, you put 32. And then you can only put at the address number five. This is about the direct mapping cache. So the rest of the block B are used as a tag. Meaning that if let's say you have another block 33, 
Then you set uh, the address is five here, and then the offset is three maybe. In this case, okay, three, uh, offset we don't care like, because you, you copy everything here. So, for example, let's say you want a 33, block 33. You want to copy to the cache. You must remove the block 32 from here. Then only you can put in the block 33. Okay, so this is about the direct map cache. So what is the uh, uh, advantage as, and the disadvantage of the direct map? Advantage is, is simple and it's also inexpensive. That means not all the block can be mapped to all the line. Okay, so it will be cheaper. And simple, inexpensive, and the fixed location for a given block. If a program assesses two blocks that map to the same line repeatedly, then the cache misses are very high. Uh, trashing means the trash means you throw into a dustbin, right? It's very high. Meaning, uh, let's say if you assess block 32, 5, and block 33, 5, all the times. So always you have to miss all the times. So this is the problem about the direct map. And now we are talking about one example of the direct map cache. So basically, uh, if your line size is 32 bytes, okay, so you have a five offset bits, meaning that uh, you need a five bits to represent 32 bytes. Two to the power of five equals to 32. Meaning here we have a, a 32, uh, 32 bytes. The cache size. It's actually 16 kilobyte. Okay, 16 kilobyte means that the line number is 2 to the power of 14. You have 16 kilobyte, so 2 to the power of 10 equals to 1k. And then uh, we have uh, 2 to the power of 4 equals to 16. In this case, 2 power to the 14 equals to 16 kilobyte. Okay, so 16 kilobyte. So that means you have the 14, by, uh, 14 bits to represent the line number. So the line equals to cache size over the line size. Okay, so this is the uh, 2, 14 over the 2, 5. So you get 2, 9. So this is the number of lines, 5, 1, 2. So 5, 1, 2, uh, because one line is uh, 2 to the power of 5, right? 32 bytes. So you have uh, 16 kilobytes. So you definitely you have five, one, two lines. So the number of sets is number of lines. Uh, and then the set bits is nine bits. Set bits is nine bits. So uh, the set bit is nine bits because this to represent the five, one, two. Uh, uh, five, one, two. Uh, the number of lines inside cache will determine what is the number of the set. So remaining bit will be uh, Total bit, we have 32 bit computer, right? So 32 bit, so we minus the set bit and also offset bits, then we have the 18 bits uh, over here. So this 18 bits will be here. So this will be the address for the cache. So to look up the address of the 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So when uh, 0x means, it's basically a uh, hexa number hexadecimal number. So uh, this one is a <clears throat> local address of the direct mapping cache. Uh, so this is how uh, that means uh, first, uh, the least significant bit, five bits, uh, is for the offset. And the uh, uh, next 15 bits, how many bits? Next uh, nine bits will be the set. And the last, uh, this one will be the tab. So this is about the direct mapping cache. So after that, we, uh, the, this one, the designer found that the direct mapping cache is very low performance, uh, have a very low performance. So that's why they invented the set associative mapping address. What's the difference between the set associative and the direct mapping and also the associative is that uh, there is a two-way set associative. That means there are two caches together for this exercise. Uh, so, sorry, uh, for this uh, for this design. Uh, this is about the two-way set associative. So as you can see, 
they duplicate the direct mapping. They put two or four of inside the complete picture. After that, uh, let, let me uh, let me uh, redo this uh, 32, 5. Uh, and then we have a uh, 33, 5, right? 33, 5. Uh. For example, in the direct mapping, if I copy the 32 here, and then this is the fifth, uh, sorry, I, I cannot copy here. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to copy over here. Uh, this is the number 5 and 32. Okay. For example, if I want to put in the 33 data over here, so what I have to do is I have to remove. But for the two-way set associative, I can directly put here 33 and the fifth. Uh, then I have the two set of data over here. So this is a two-way set associative to solve the trashing problem. Yeah. Yeah, so this is actually a two-way uh, set associative cache compared to the one-way. So it will be an improved version. Yeah. So after I've talked so much, I believe uh, you need uh, some uh, exercise in order to understand this. So we will directly go to the first, as a, uh, first tutorial, first question of the tutorial for. Okay, uh, let me show you the question over here. Okay, let's read the question. A two-way set associative cache has lines of 16 bytes and a total size of 8 kilobytes. Okay, the 64 uh, megabyte mean memory is byte addressable. Show the format of the mean memory address. So I'm going to uh, give you some time to do it yourself. Think about it, how to do. Maybe I give you five, five minutes to do it before uh, I will show you the answer. Okay, so uh, let me brief you a little bit. Uh. Okay, for example, you have the 16 uh, lines of 16 bytes. Uh. So first you draw a memory. Memory over here. Okay, so we have the memory. Uh, they say it has a 64 megabyte mean memory, uh, so 64 megabyte. Uh, mean memory. So it's back addressable. Uh, so means uh, from the zero, come to here. Okay, so uh, many address over here. So a two-way set associative cache has a length of 16 bytes and a total size of 8 kilobytes. Uh -huh. Total size. Uh, so there are two ways. Uh, and then have a length of 16 bytes. So how many lines are there? Let's say you have eight kilobytes. So total number lines equals to eight kilobyte, right? Eight kilobyte divided by 16 by right? So what can you get here? Now remember this eight k uh, is not eight thousand. Uh. Eight kilobyte is actually eight multiply one zero two four over 16. What's the number of lines? Uh, can, can, you, uh, can, can you repeat your question? Yeah, who is talking? Chung Yi, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, what, what, uh, what do you say? 512 lines. 512, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, answer. Okay, fine. Good. Okay, very good. Five one two. So there are five one two lines. Very good. But uh, do forget in this question. Basically, we have the two way set associative means we have to split this into two. Uh. Uh, yeah. After that, show the format of the mean memory address. 
Okay, so this will be a very tough question. Huh? Yeah, I will give you some time to do it first, uh, maybe three minutes. To try first, then only I will share the answer. I will give you the jackpot, uh, open the jackpot for you to do if you want. So I'm creating a jack so later you will be able to access it. Two way set associated. So number of lines is five and two lines, but it's split to two way. Let me go further. Let's say if you have a 64 megabyte. So how many bits are there? So 64 means it's 2 to the power of 6, right? Multiply 2 to the power of 10. Multiply 2 to the power of 10. Then only you get 64 megabyte. Uh, 2, 2, 8, 8. 8 multiplied 8 is uh, 64. Huh? So totally you have a 226. Huh? So yeah, 626 uh, bits required to represent the each part inside memory. So what you have to do is, if you draw out this one, uh, you tell me how many bytes are there. Definitely uh, 512 byte accessible, uh, addressable. So you have to tell me how many bytes for each of them. Uh, let me go to the lectures a little bit. The format over here, two-way set associative, tag set and words. Okay, tag set and words. We have the tag over here. Tag over here. Set and also word. Eh? Okay, how many words are there? So uh, let me see the yeah. So how many bits are there? Everything here. Let's, let's think about this first. Or you can refer to the lecture notes. For those who can do, uh, you can do at the jam board over there. You can share your answer at the jam board. Uh, let's say you have uh, 16 bytes of the catch line. So what is your word? How many bits for your word? Anyone can answer? Jing Wen? Let's say you have uh, 16 bytes. How many bits you need to use to represent uh, the 16 bytes? You need uh, how many bits to represent them? Anyone? You want to say one, two, eight bits, huh? Uh, not too many, uh, 128, not so many. Uh, yeah, if 128 bits is the data, but in order to adjust them, how many bits? For 16 different bytes. In binary numbers, how many bits are needed? For 16 different bytes. I want to point to 16 different locations. So how many bits do I need? Let's say I have, a Z, I have one bit, I can point to two. Two bit, I can point to four. Addresses.
Anyone? Or oh, Chiyan, you want to answer? Answer say four. Four. Yeah, correct. Very good. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, very good. Yeah, correct. It's four. Huh? Because two bit is four. Three bit is eight. Then four bit is sixteen. Huh? To the power of four, right? Okay, very good. Okay, I understand. Huh? So, I think this uh, right answer, yeah? At the jam board. So the word there is four bits. Uh. You put four bits over at the word there. So here we can put the four bits. Uh, here we put the four bits. Should be correct, right? Later we see answer. Uh. But the problem is about this one, five, one, two lines, uh, because it's two, right? You have to divide by two, right? At the end. Okay. If let's say because of the two way, right? Yeah. So uh, later we see how uh, in the answer, yeah? this one, two, five, six. Two, five, six. Uh, how many bits you need to represent two, five, six? Uh? Two to the power of eight, right? So you need eight bits, right? Uh, need eight bits to represent the this one. Two five six. Okay. So this one should be eight or should be nine. And then the rest, what's the total number here? Because the total should be twenty six, right? Twenty six total. Then the set you have to decide whether it's a uh, eight or nine. The other day I'll put in this one equals to 26 minus all this thing. Okay, so this will be the format of the mean memory address. Okay, without further ado, uh, if anyone try, we will give you a few minutes if you want to try before I give you the answer. Okay, I will share the answer. Because this one quite difficult. As I say, I have learned this for a few years then only then I know. So a two-way cache set equals to two lines per set in a cache. So the cache has a line of 16 kilobytes and the total size of 8K bytes. So there are total of 8K bytes over 16 bytes. Okay, 16 bytes is 512. This is what we did correctly. So two lines per set in the cache, and there are a total of five, one, two lines. So that means we have two, five, six. Huh? So we need an eight bit to identify the set number. So that means here we need an eight bit. Huh? In the answer, they say eight bit. Because it's a 64 megabyte here. So how many addresses are needed here? 26 minus 12. Uh, excuse me, the answer, what is the answer? 26 minus 12, you can turn on your mic and tell me. What's the text here? Fourteen. Okay, you can say fourteen. Okay, we could try yeah. Fourteen later we see whether whether it's correct or not. Okay, so this will be the answer. Show the format of the mean memory address in the two-way set associated. This one divided, so it becomes two by six. Is equals to 2 to the power 8, right? This is how, uh, where it comes from. And then 4 bit come from the 16 back here, over here. And then the 26 is the total size. Total uh, size. Huh? So let's come to here and see the answer. So it's 14. Very good. This case, uh, your friend. Okay, very good. Yeah. Very good. So at 14, 8, 4. Very, very good. That means you can understand, yeah? Yeah, very good, very good. So set associative, yeah. Uh, I will give you a few minutes to look at this. If you have any question about this question, yeah, let me know. 
the memory, uh, the, not the memory, the system itself. If you can, can put this, then you can get the full marks. Huh? Yeah, text set work. For the fully associative text, you only have a text and also word. You don't have a set. From uh, asking, uh, from the example in lecture note, the text fit use 32 minus 5 minus 8, where is 32? Or oh, the 32 actually come from 64 megabyte, 64 megabyte. It's come from here. This one 64. The 64 equals to this. Yeah, 64 equals to 2 to the power 26. So you need 26. Yeah, am I answering your question? Don't Oh, not really. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, the 32, 36 actually come from the 64 megabyte. Which means that, uh, uh, in the lecture notes, here, yeah. in the lecture notes, you have this uh, question, 32B. Uh, 32B is where it come from, uh, 32B. Yeah, 32B minus this. Okay, so 32B, in anything here? Line size, sketch size. 32 bit should be given in your uh, question. Uh. In this one, it's already assumed 32 bit. Uh. Yeah. For the 32 bit, you will need 24. Uh, 10, 24. 32 bit is a lot. Uh. 4 giga. Yeah. 4 giga bytes. Uh. 32 bit. Yes, 30 is 2 to the power. Uh, 30 is. Uh, giga. So you have 32 is 4 uh, gigabyte, but it's not provided in the example. That means this one should be provided. Uh. Yeah, provided. It's 4 gigabyte mean memory. Yeah. Am I answering your question? Or any question you can ask again? Any? Okay, yeah, so you can. Uh. So, okay, very good. So everyone can understand this. I thought the 32 come from the line size. No, uh, 32 come from the mean memory size or the maximum mean memory you can. Sometimes, uh, let's say your computer can access to, maybe they, they, will, they will tell you how, how, what is the maximum RAM size you can put, right? Uh, for some microprocessor, then uh, you look at the RAM size. For example, uh, let's say if you want to see the your computer, uh, let's say I, I go and search the Intel processor, Intel Pentium i7 processor. We are going to look at the specs, uh, yeah, specs of the Intel Core i7 processors. Yes, we are learning computer architectures. So although the big company sometimes they will hide their they, they will hide uh, they will they will not let you to see everything of their technology right they have some competitors but uh, uh we will still need to look at their their text uh. okay so uh when you want to search the specs you go to the technical spec and then you go and search. This is actually a vertical salmon mark. It's the Intel i7 1160G generation 7 processor. Uh, you see it has 12 mega cache. Uh, the clock uh, rate is 4.4 gigahertz. So let's go to the here and see. And see basically it has been released by Q3, quarter 3, 20. Quarter 3, yeah. So the code name is actually, the processor name is actually number is i7-160-G7. 
and uh, 11 generation. Uh, definitely 11 generation will be faster than the uh, previous generation. Uh. So although it's the uh, i7, uh, different generation actually uh, different speed. Uh. So you can see it's using the 10 nanometer super fin. <coughs> uh, super fin is a very uh, high end technology. Uh. So you can go and search. Uh. Yeah. So super fin, and then number of calls is four, track is eight, as why well I have said, uh, for the uh, Intel processor i7, you can definitely do 32 uh, instructions together. Maximum, uh, sometimes you cannot do it uh, because it's, there's some uh, hazards over there. Then the tuber, uh, tuber C is 4.4. Here you have a cache, 12 mega Intel Smart cache. Uh, if you ask me why is this, I don't know. Uh, because it's a trick secret. Uh. And if I know, uh, then uh, I, I can tell the more details, right? So, that's why this technology will come up maybe 10 years later inside the textbooks. Uh. So uh, basically they, they are using the same, same concept uh, that we learn in the books, but they have some innovation. Uh. Uh, so uh, what else do we want to see? Maximum memory size, uh, that is what I want to mention. The address, uh, the memory address format basically depends on the maximum memory size as well. Let's say if you just put four gig of the RAM, then uh, they will still have to cater for this 32. Uh, so the memory address will still be, still be there to cater for you. Uh. Let's say this 32, how many bits is required to represent this 32 gigabyte? 32 is two to the power of five, right? 35 bits, right? Uh, 35 wires must be inside there, right? Uh -huh. So there will be, this will be the maximum number. So you know, you see the, there are DDR, DDR RAM, and also a maximum number of memory channel, uh, two, you can put two, then other specs. Uh. When you do your assignments, uh, you can refer to this Intel uh, websites or other uh, relevant websites. Then you will be able to tell what happened from one computer to the other. Okay, what uh, happened from i5 to i7, uh, what's the difference? Uh, for i, you can say for i7, you have four calls and eight tracks. The rest for the i5, let's say I go and search the i5. For example, if I go to i5, let me see what is the, go to all Intel core processor i5. Uh, yeah, I, I will see. I, I need to see how many cores are there, right? And the tracks. Just now I have four and eight. Right? Now I can just one of them. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is the i7 again. Uh. Let me trust Google better. Okay. i5 Intel processor. Uh, as a computer architecture students, you must roughly know uh, what, what are inside the processor, right? I say i5. The computer technologies evolve very fast. Every year it evolve, uh, not like the electrical wires uh, seldom evolve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very, very slow. Uh. Computer, very fast one. Oh, this one also four, four and the eight. Uh. Yeah, this one is I five. Uh. Also four cores and the eight threads. So, wow, this year one, uh, very good. Maximum memory size going up uh, because this is the newer one. They can allow up to uh, 64 gigabyte means 36 bits. Uh. Yeah, 36 bits. Okay, so you can go and look at all these facts and then do your assignment. Uh, by the way, because we still have time, I think better we go and do one more. Uh, consider a 32-bit. I want you to try this one. Consider a 32-bit microprocessor that has an on-chip, 16-kilobyte uh, four-way set associative cache. Assume that the cache has a line size of four 32 bits worth. Draw a block diagram in this cache showing its organization and how the different address fields are used to determine a cache hit and miss. Where in the cache is the words from the memory location A, B, C, D, E, 8, 
FB map. Uh -huh. Let's do this. I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. Uh, this is the last question for today. Okay, uh, if you have done, please put at the jam bar. Put your answer at the jam bar. Also, set associative. Uh. Set associative is a very uh, famous question. This is quite difficult. Thirty two bit uh, microprocessor for packs, I mean, uh, has an on chip sixteen kilobyte four ways set associative. So what you do is you what you do? Sixteen kilobyte equals to kilo ah, kilo is ten ah, two fourteen ah. Yeah. So two fourteen you need fourteen bytes to re represent them. But you you have a four four way ah. Four way means sixteen bytes. Four ways mean each of them is four K, right? Four K is, is a uh, twelve. Uh. You need twelve at the set, uh. So that means from here, uh, you have the three things: tab, set, and also word, right? Uh, for the set is about twelve uh, here. Four way. Assume the cache is the right size of 32 bit words. Okay, 32 bit. Four 32 bits was cache has a line size of four. Because the cache is four ways, so it has the four 32 bit words is uh 32 bit means how many bytes? 32 bit, four bytes, huh? Four bytes will need two two bits huh? to represent them, right? So here we put two uh, here. Uh, what else we have? They never tell us what is the uh, memory, right? Mean memory, uh, so we don't know this one yet. Uh. Yeah. But never mind A B C D A B C D E A F A. Uh, what is this? A B C D. Uh. Let me put here A B. Oh, I, I cannot put too close. Uh. Later. I cannot draw my hexa, uh, my binary bit. Uh. So this is hexa. A, B, C, D, E, A, F, A. So in this case, I want to transform one by one. Uh. F is one, 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 one. One, zero, zero, zero. This is what? One 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 zero right. One one zero one. Is it one four eight thirteen? Huh? So this is one one zero zero. One zero one one. One zero one zero. A A is ten right. <clears throat> so from here, so. This one is two right two bits over here. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. From here. This one is actually your set. Uh, set. The rest are actually the tab. Uh. This is the tab. So you have to tell me what is the number over here. And the number over here. In this case, uh, then only you will know they are referring to the zero word over there. Okay, so let's say you draw a hash over here. 
Okay, let's say you draw a cash, right? For example, you have a cash over here. And then you have a memory. Okay, this is a memory, yeah. So the set is 12. So we have two words. Set is a 12. 12, we go to here, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 over here. This is the 12. It's referring to the 0, 0. This 0, 0 actually referring to this. And the 12, basically, this one is not 12, but this one is 1, 0. What's this number? Oh, very hard. Huh? This, one, this one actually referring to this. This address over here. Yeah, so this will be the answer. Referring to this tab. Okay, so after that, this one is referring to the your tab. Tab over here. Tab you put over here, that set will be over here. Okay, tab is the address over here. Yeah, so let's have a look at this later. I will show you the answer. Try to think about this first. Quite difficult, right? That's why I say I have already learned this for a few years. Only then I understand. Uh, all right. Uh, quite difficult, right? Okay, let me show you the answer, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so this will be the answer, yeah? It's a very difficult one. For it. For it. Okay, so you have the four offset, the 16 bit or byte, 16 bit or byte, 32 bit words, uh, four, uh, or four, uh, this one is a line size of 32. So that means this one is the four multiplied four. Uh, I thought it's a uh, question is this four multiplied four, it's a uh, four bits. That's why this one is four bits. Okay, four 32 bits, okay, line size of four 32 bits. Oh, it's a cheating us, uh, yeah. Four 32 bits uh, for one. Uh. Okay, so it's a four byte over here. So come back to the answer over here. So you have the offset of the four bytes and the set is eight. Uh, so offset of the four bits and the set is eight bits. Uh, like what we did, did we do correctly? Okay, so eight bit and then uh, this one is the uh, answer. So, okay, you can have a look at this first. Uh, yeah. So, answer is uh, the four way set associative is four lines per set in the cache. So, 16 kilobyte cache, and the cache has a line size of four 32 bits worth. So, that's why it has a one, zero, two, four lines in the cache. Okay, so four lines per set, and one, zero, two, four lines in the cache. So uh, at the end, this is the answer, okay, answer. So any question on this uh, answer? Well, here is eight, uh, eight, why is eight here? Eight over here, we get 12, uh, okay, eight. It's a uh, 16 kilobyte four way, four way four is eight, uh, okay, so, now mind later uh, we will see how it works over there. Okay. Let's see the calculation over there. Yeah. So uh for this one, anyone can do. So you have 32 bit uh, over here, minus the 8 minus the 4 equals to 20. So the 8 here 
Now it's because of four lines per set and the one zero two four lines in the cache. Uh, in this case, so yeah. So I will we will continue this uh, next time uh, yeah because we have not enough time to discuss about this. Uh. But anyway, uh, this one will be your homework. Uh. So please do this homework. Then uh, for the next class, we will continue to discuss about this. Uh. Is that okay for you? This is quite a difficult one. Uh. Yeah. Anyone has already done? Or you want to show me? Your... I think uh, better we, we do it as homework. Uh. So this is the homework. Uh. Uh, let's do this one as a homework. Then next time you will discuss about this question. Yeah, please copy this. Uh. So I will put this one, copy. Okay, I will put at the Jamboard so that you can uh, read this question. And then you can understand uh, what is, uh, how to do the set associative cache. It's a very difficult one, uh, uh, but uh, I think you we uh, If you understand this more, then you can do it. Uh, let's uh, I'll paste over here. Yeah, you can do it here. Then next time, I uh, will leave these spots until uh, until next week. Uh. So we will still continue to use this uh, Jamboard. Yeah? So please copy this Jamboard. Then uh, next time, we can continue to use this. I will post at the Google Classroom. So please do this homework. Then next time, we discuss about this. Yeah, understand this. And next time, we can discuss about this. Uh, do you need the uh, answer for this uh, tutorial? Let me ask, uh, if you need, then I can post to the Google Classroom. Uh, Chung Yi say, sir, why the set not 10 bits? Uh? Okay, uh, I thought the 32 is come from the line size. Yeah, correct, correct, you only you're right. Yeah, from the line size. Uh. So why the set not 10 bits? Uh, that, one, that one, I will give you the answer first. Next time you discuss about this. Uh. So do you want me to give you the answer? I think I give you the full answer better, right? Because if not then for those who want to study first, uh, they cannot. Uh. Okay, I will give you the full answer. Yeah, later, then only I will explain to you during our Friday tutorial. Sorry, it's a bit late already. Yeah? I know maybe some of you have another class. Uh, let me give you the answer first. Tutorial for answers. I've, I've given you some of the answers already. So for those who are very, very keen to study this, then I believe you will, uh, you will study first. Huh? Okay, so tutorial for answer. So I think I have to end the class. Now, because, uh, oh, I calculated wrongly just now. Oh, I see, I see. So the definition of what should be one word, because too bad. The word uh, is very difficult uh, because one word uh, for a 16 bit computer is two bytes, but for the 32 bits computer is four bytes. So you definitely have to see, look at their definition. Uh. And for your information, this world got many computer scientists. Uh, so they might use different terminology huh, for the word, yeah. But don't worry, I've already given you all the answer. You read first, then uh, by Friday, we can discuss. So I already posted there, so you can have a look. Huh? And then you can write your answer at the Jamboard. 
So thank you very much. I see you. You may leave now. You try a question. Thank you, Chong Yi. Thank you, Tiong Le. Yeah. One word. Yeah, one word is sometimes it's one byte, sometimes two bytes. Depends on the definition. That's why the question will tell us everything. Uh, just how the question said, uh, four, then I don't know whether it's uh, for each line or for four, four ways catch, right? So sometimes it has to, question has to be very specific. Uh. So thank you very much, Chong Yi and everyone. Hang Dong. Okay, bye. If you have no problem, then you can leave. I know you have other classes. Thank you very much for spending your time uh, to understand this. Okay, bye. So see you on Friday. Okay, and hope you keep safe. Uh. Okay, bye. Thank you. If you have a question, you can send me WhatsApp. Thank you.